Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So this is a deep dive book review into The Evil Queen by Gina Schulter, a video or a video, a book that I had listened to via audiobook last month during a readathon. There is a small book review on it um, under the heading Daphne if you wanted to look that up. Um, otherwise, if you haven't read or listen to this book before, I'd highly recommend maybe coming back at a later time as this may or may not have spoilers. And my previous review doesn't have any at all that I can recall. So anyway, so I'm going to kind of go over the synopsis and then dig deeper into it. So the evil queen, um, a dream come true and a living nightmare. Um, Welcome to the forest of good and evil. So far, far away in the realm of Enchantia, creatures of legend still exist. Magic is the norm and fairy tales are real. Except fairy tales aren't based on myths and legends of the past. They are prophecies of the future. Raised in the mortal realm, Everly Morrow has no idea she's a real-life fairy tale princess until she manifests an ability to commune with mirrors. Um... Seeing her soon, a horrifying truth is revealed. She is fated to be Snow White's greatest enemy, the Evil Queen. With powers beyond her imagination or control, Everly returns to the land of her birth. There she meets Roth Charmaine, the supposed Prince Charming. Their attraction is undeniable, but their relationship is doomed. As the prophecy unfolds, Everly faces one betrayal after another, and giving into her dark side proves more tempting every day. Can she resist or will she become queen and the villain she was born to be? The battle between good and evil is on. So going into this, I really enjoy fairy tales and I'm in a real fantasy mood right now. I'm reading just about anything I can fantasy and having actually a bit of a struggle reading anything else right now. It doesn't have to be YA, it can be anything. I'm just really into fantasy right now. So I picked this up solely because I had spotted to cut the cover while walking through Walmart, it was attractive, it was shiny, it was very alluring, and knowing absolutely nothing about the book, I put it on my TBR list and hunted it down. So I ended up listening to this one through audiobook, which was very, very enjoyable. Um, so um, going through the story, it follows Everly, um, who is in the beginning of the book, it dictates her as a twin. Um, and her twin sister is Harley. So her and her sister live in a regular small town type thing. And it's your race, regular basic story that would usually start off in a, in a situation like this where, you know, they're perceived to be twins. They're very close. And one in school is very loved and surrounded by lots of friends, while the other one, for no real apparent reason, is ignored and neglected and is only given somewhat um, decent attention just because the um, sister that is loved is insistent on it. Um, Later on, you find out that um, the two of them have magical gifts and that Hartley's isn't nearly as strong as Everly's and that Everly is potentially destined to be the evil queen. So I'm not going to deep dive too much into what happens just because there's so much that goes on, but the story itself really drew me in. Um, you know, I keep thinking back to something that A.G. McDonald said in one of his reviews, or rather one of his um, rants previews for one of his um, chapters for Firehearts was the fact that um, all of his characters are in different shades of gray. No one is black and white because there isn't really anything black and white. Even in real life, no one is black and white. It's not a yes or no answer. And more often than not, that just can't be the case. And in this book, I was drawn to that concept the most. Because going through, as you are listening in or reading the book, it comes across that the story of Snow White and the Good Queen and the Evil Queen and the Princess and the Prince and all that, they're based on prophecies. And 
by the time you get to the end of the story, um, you realize that just about every single person or every single character played a different role at a different time. So, you know, Everly and all the things that she goes through starts off as a simple, um, neglected girl who could be portrayed as Snow White at one point and then situations change and she ends up facing so many different things that happen between or rather from discovering that she's not actually um, a sister to Hartley she's actually a cousin and that her real twin is living in Enchantia, which is a land of fantasy and magic, to finding out that the woman she thought was her mother is actually her aunt, and that Everly inadvertently is responsible for her aunt's death, and then, you know, just from one situation to the next, everything ends up, um, at least based on those circumstances, you know, force her to become the evil queen for a small amount of time, and then there are moments where she could be perceived as the huntsman. And then there are moments where she could be seen as a protector dictated by like a dwarf. So, and that's kind of the major roles that are um, portrayed throughout the book is the protector, the hunt, which is dictated to be a dwarf, um, the huntsman, the queen, the princess, and the prince. And every single character between the sister Everly and all the other different characters that come into play, every single one of them end up dictating different traits of almost every single one of those characters. And it's difficult to actually follow and determine who's going to be who, because by the end of the book, they've all played a different role at one time or another, and all based on different circumstances. And it's very clear that the only reason why that person acted the way that they did was because of a certain circumstance or a situation that came about. You know, for example, um, let's see, trying to pick a random event that kind of went on. Okay, so when their mother died... um, in the beginning of the book. So the girls are just figuring out that they have some magic to them and their mother has kept a lot of this a secret because they wanted or she wanted to protect them. And then up and behold, when the mother discovers that Everly has magic and has been tapping into it, not knowing the consequences for either of them, um, she insists that Everly show her what the magic is. And while demonstrating what she can do, she inadvertently kills her mother, not realizing that by showing her mom what she could do is what killed her in the first place. And that by going on, she ends up slowly killing her sister, not realizing what's going on. And you find out that her magic, she can't have magic of her own. She is a sorceress, which is what she gets called in Enchantia or as known as a sorceress and their magical power stems from draining the power from other people. They don't have magic of their own. Their ability relies in draining magic from others. So, or siphoning, I think is the word that they use. And so by showing her mother, she ends up siphoning magic from her mom, not knowing this and ends up killing her unawares. So her mom dies and then they end up finding out the brutal truth over time that it was her who she was responsible for killing and it ends up tainting the girl's perspective. So for a small amount of time, that situation by itself ends up, you know, making her desperate and uh, perceive evil for a small amount of time. Or, you know, later on in the book, um, Hartley gets kidnapped and Everly is determined to get her back regardless of whatever costs or at all costs and ends up putting herself again in what could be perceived as the evil witch situation where she does and makes decisions based on the fact that her sister who will always be her sister blood tie or not um, is in danger and so she makes those decisions based on emotional responses and it's perceived as evil based on the actions that she does to accomplish those goals where Um, you know, there are other times in the book where, um, you know, she's been captured and locked away in a tower and everything that is revolved around it, you know, she ends up going back to, 
um, in Chantia and discovering her true love or rather her true mother in her true family. And she ends up confronting her mom and her mom out of fear, out of the prophecy and everything else that goes with it, ends up ordering um, her daughter to be murdered and ends up causing Everly to flee. And right there, based on the circumstances, again, causes the supposed character to change. So instead of Everly being perceived as the evil witch, now she's perceived as Snow White, as now she's being hunted down by an evil queen, so to speak, and who happens to be her biological mom. And it's just, like I said, the, the, the thing, the, the personalities and traits kept shifting. And the whole story is dramatically focused on the prophecy. And then you find out that the land or the realm of Enchantia has other parts to it as well. There are other realms within their space and they mention them. They're all based on different prophecies. So and they're all different fairy tales that we would be known and familiar with. Everything from The Little Mermaid to um, Aladdin to Beauty and the Beast to Sleeping Beauty. They were all briefly mentioned. And actually, by surprise, even the Snow or the, uh, the Swan Princess was mentioned. And that one really threw me for a loop because um, it was briefly mentioned once in a TV show. Other than that, I've never heard reference to it aside from the movie itself, which I happened to really enjoy as a kid. So if I were to compare this book to anything to give anyone a good idea as to how this, this story and characters kind of flow, if anyone has watched the TV show um, Once Upon a Time, where you get to see different sides of the evil queen and all the different characters and how the princess can be perceived as good and evil. She's not just good. And same thing with the queen. That is what I would compare it to. It had a similar vibe to it. And actually, I'm hoping beyond hope that this book goes on and goes on to more more series or more book, more story. Um, you know, this book ends in a way that it could have been left as a standalone, but there are characters that don't really get a lot of limelight or, um, description time where I wanted to know more about them. Um, one in particular is Nicholas. He's, um, in the beginning of the book, he's dictated to be their father or rather stepfather. And they grow up with him until they find out that he's actually um, a sorcerer himself. And he runs from the same bloodline and similarity to what Everly is, where they both have to siphon from others to have a power. And um, yeah, it's really hard to get a good read on that one. Like he turns out like you end up loving him in the beginning of the book, kind of liking him in the middle and then toward the end. You're conflicted. You don't know if you should be hating him, loving him or not, because there hasn't been enough information devolved about what's going on with him. So the story ends out well enough. It's just I wanted to know more. When the story end, it it just left me wanting to know more. There was a lot of questions answered, but I still wanted to know more. So this is apparently book one of a potential series. So um this book only recently came out uh, this last June, so I'm really, really looking forward and hoping that there will be more to this story. But um, it kept me on the edge of my seat. There was so much going on. There was so much depth to the characters. And, you know, a lot of people complain that the YA, there's a lot of romance in it. And while you expect that from a fairy tale, there was an underlying romance to it. But it wasn't overly done. It wasn't um, overly sexual. It wasn't um, distasteful. It was put in where it needed to be put in and then kind of left to its own devices. So it was um, the beginning of a romance story, so to speak, but it wasn't the sole purpose of the story. There was so much more going on. So... Um, yeah, this was definitely a book that I thoroughly enjoyed and I would recommend to anybody. So for me, it was a five out of five stars. One of my favorite reads um, that I have read in quite some time. 
and it's kind of what spark sparked the fantasy um crave for me right now so um yeah that is sort of my thoughts and rundown about the evil queen and again i would highly recommend it to anybody so thank you so much for listening if you are new to my channel i greatly appreciate you stopping and taking the time to listen to my thoughts on this book if you are an existing subscriber i thank you so much for um, supporting me. And, uh, again, I will see you all in the next video.